All right, good evening. We'll just get started here tonight. And uh, just a couple things by way of... This is kind of what we had happen the other night, Luke. All right, we'll try that again. So just by way of announcement, to put you all in reminder, on the back music stand right there, those are those ballot nominations. So you can just be thinking and praying over that. And then if you'd like to take one and get that back to the deacons or leadership um, for next Sunday. But tonight we are here to kind of just spend a time of encouragement and to recognize our seniors and to just give a, a challenge and pray for them. So. Tonight what we'll do is we'll have them come up, but we also have the uh, youth leaders that are going to say a word about each one, a little gift for these senior individuals, and then we will close with a challenge, a thought, and a prayer, and, and then spend some time fellowshipping together. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open us off, off in prayer here, and then we will get started. Dearly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together as a church family and a church body, and we particularly lift up these seniors who have spent time studying and training and growing over the past several years, and we just pray for them as they uh, continue with their plans for what you may have for them in the next step for college or for career, and so Lord, we just lift them up to you tonight. We pray that you'd guard and protect them, pray that you'd watch over them, pray that you would help them to continue to learn to grow in your grace and independency upon it, and we just pray that as a church family, we can be an encouragement to them and to one another, and just to be blessed by how you use the body to encourage and love uh, each other. And we just thank you for this time. We pray that you would be honored and glorified, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. So before the teens and youth leaders come up here, I just want to open us with a thought or a challenge. As Laura and I were with college kids over at Faith, the Lord really laid a burden on our hearts for them. And so just as I'm thinking of each one of you and your future plans and some of you we maybe haven't gotten the chance with just a year and change to know you as well as we would like, but just to share from our heart, in, in John chapter 4, it's one of my favorite passages, and it's one that as we spent our time at faith, God really used in my life and in our life with these college kids, and, and if I'm just going to challenge you know, the group of you here, when you think about what I love most about this is just this picture of the life that comes from Christ, but it's given to us in living water. And this illustration that was very practical, but yet God was really, Jesus was trying to draw her attention to the supernatural, the, the reality of life. And we won't read all of this, because I'm going to keep this brief, but in John chapter 4 there, when Jesus has this encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well, if you look at verse 10... When Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. And just to pause there, as you guys go off and you're going to be kind of out on your own. This is the reality it, for us as high schoolers when we go out into the college and career and adult stages of life. There are many things that are out there and that weight us, but according to the wisdom of this world, they are things that will cause you to thirst again. There is only one thing that satisfies and will leave you, you know, full and not wanting more and more. And, and I think that is such a critical part of this stage of life. When we go out, we often can try to taste and see what's out there in the world rather than in the goodness of God. And so to just challenge each one of you to be thinking that way, that as you go forth and whatever plans God may have for you to really make this personal, to know what it is to have living water, the life of Christ within you that causes you to never thirst again. Because in, the reality is this world will teach us otherwise that it's always something else. And scripture tells us that we, we naturally go to broken cisterns, things that hold no water. Mark, who was here with us last week, mentioned that verse from Jeremiah. 
And here you see that reference basically again with this thought of whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But then Jesus says, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And then the woman responds by saying, sir, give me this water. And so that's my you know, prayer for you and for all the teens that as you go through the Harvest Youth Group and then go on into the next stage of life that you have, that it would grow within you a passion to say, you know, Lord, give me this water, this water that causes me to never thirst again, that truly satisfies. And in this woman's life, it changed her life because you see in verse 28 that it says she left her water pot and went her way into the city. And she ran her way to tell, tell these, these men, these people in the city, what Jesus had done for her. And so you just see this r- cool picture from a physical standpoint, but also more importantly, the spiritual standpoint of a woman receiving living water, what she really was searching and looking for and had no idea when she set out for an earthly well. But as she goes through this experience with Christ, she finds her life changed by the reality of living water. So a good reminder for all of us, but that is certainly... My prayer as a pastor for each of the teens and certainly as you guys graduate and head out to whatever God may have for you next. Here's the format we're going to use for the remainder of the time to get our seniors up here to share. So seniors, when you come up here, we're going to have you basically just share with us three things, what your future plans are, how we can pray for you, and then one thing that God showed you in your high school years, you know, one testimony of God's goodness, God's grace, one thing that God did in your life here through over the years uh, of your time in high school. So those three things, if you forget them, you'll have a youth leader up here to help help remind you. But your future plans, how we can pray for you, and then uh, just a testimony of how God worked in your life over the high school years. So we'll start this off with Kathy. She's going to come up here. And then Riley, we will have you follow Kathy. Okay, I told her she didn't have to stand the whole time. I don't like standing when somebody else is talking. (laughs) So um, I get to share a little bit about Riley, and um, I'm very thankful over the years of having her in Sunday school and getting to know her um, then as a teenager. And now she's 18, and I can't even believe it. Um, When I thought about Riley, one of the first things I thought about was her willingness to serve and um, have been very thankful for that over the years in um, nursery and junior church. And whenever I did the sign-up sheet for VBS, hers was one of the first names on the sign-up sheet. (laughs) And as somebody looking for volunteers, that's so encouraging when you walk by and you go, oh, good, I got a couple names that are willing to serve there. And um, so I really appreciated that. And um, then a couple times that I had contact with Riley was um, I hired her and her sister (laughs) to help me out a couple times and that was truly a blessing and I don't know if you remember this or not but um, this was encouraging to me um, because we were out in the weeds and it was hot and we'd been out there for two or three hours and I knew I could look on Riley's face and I knew she wanted to quit I mean I knew she was done we were all done like we were all hot and sweaty and but she just kept till the end, and that was a blessing um, to me that you pursued to the end. Um, I could tell about Riley that family is very important, and um, you know that's encouraging in this day and age. But not just her um, physical family, but her friends at church, her spiritual family is important to her. And um, Tim told me she saves seats upstairs in Sunday school all the time for her. Um, her Christian friends, so that's a blessing. But when, but the other thing that I thought about her and the verse that came to mind is that um, she is creative. And one time when I was at her house, she was doing some chalk drawings on the sidewalk. And um, so this is the verse that came to my mind in in that. And it's Ephesians 2:10, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God had prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 
And um, so I hope that as you create things, that you will remember that you are his workmanship and he has to do the work in us. And we're only his workmanship because of Jesus Christ. We are created in him uh, for good works, which God has prepared for those that walk in them. And um, I really dislike graduations because <laughs> I really hate saying goodbye to the seniors. And I know some of them don't leave completely anyway, but but on the flip side of it, the exciting thing is God has a plan, um, and he's prepared that way, and he'll be with you through that, through the hard times when you want to quit, <laughs> as well as the joyous times. So congratulations, and I'll let you come up and share um, a little bit about your plans. Okay, so I'm... Don't know what I'm gonna do for schooling yet, but um, I'm gonna work for a little bit longer and uh, just see where God leads me uh, in where I'm gonna go to school if I decide to go to college. Um, and if I do, it'll probably be uh, in um, culinary or in art. Okay. All right. Oh, you're just waiting. Okay, I was like, that's what the best like. Okay, so, um, oh no. <laughs> Should have gotten a nap today. <laughs> that would help. That always helps a mother. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, Anna. Um, there's like, um, I guess a lot of different moments that flood through your, oh, thank you, that flood through your mind. And, um, most recently, the being the, the one at, uh, oh no, Vinton, <laughs> I almost said Independence, the one at, at, uh, Vinton or when we were playing Vinton and, um, just, I don't know, just, just watching you like go through things like, and my heart stopping in the moment, um. But as I think through like the last year, um, I don't know, just how there is um, um, watching God bring different pressures and, um, and hardships and um, pain and things that you just don't see coming, kind of like a goalie clearing a ball. Um, and my word that came to mind um, was let, and I'll kind of explain why, because that sounds like a really lame word. Um, but to let, and Ryan shared a, a sermon with me, and oh no, I was going to look up the name of the guy. Who? Ian Thomas. Ian Thomas. I don't know him. Um, but a really good message if anybody's taking a drive anywhere. And um, so I was listening to it on the way to some game, and um, he was talking about faith and how... Um, the meaning of faith, or I guess the way faith and bought is, it's not something we're doing, it's something, it's to let go, or to let something be done in us. And so I'm gonna really not explain this well, because I don't understand much about cars, but, um, so he's explaining how like every regenerated believer is indwelt with the power of the Almighty, the power of all creation being spoken to being, it's in us. Um, but it's faith that lets that actually become a reality and, and lets that actually transform us. And um, he likened it to a clutch. <laughs> clutch. <laughs> My brain's been foggy all day. <laughs> so a clutch and, uh, and how, like, a, if a, a really, like, um, car goes real fast or like by you or something, you don't go, wow, look at that clutch. 
that's an amazing clutch. Where do I get a clutch like that? You're always commenting on the engine of that vehicle and what that engine is able to do, and you have no regard or no even acknowledgement that a clutch is involved in like seeing that just race by you. And, um, and just how similarly that's our faith and how faith just allows the power that's already there to actually engage and transform a work that's done by the wheels on the road. And um, it just lets, it lets the power that's already inside that container do something. Um, and unless that clutch allows that, it's just a powerful engine and nobody knows it. And it's just, it's just there and it's a car that doesn't move. And, um, and so that's, that's the word or that's the thought that came to my mind was that you have let God um, work through those pressures and just the encouragement that is and the challenge that that is as any, um, any regenerated church member would have when we see God um, at work and actually putting his power to the wheels to the road. Um, it, is, it is convicting um, and an encouragement and just um, knowing the, the different pressures, the different um, ways uh, that you've walked through um, the last years and even just this year and um, being allowing, allowing God to work and letting him work through it and seeking him through it um, and letting him, letting him humble and walk you through that humbling process um, is faith and that's really cool to see because until we see the car move do we even understand that the engine's there and um, and so I don't know so it's, it's just awesome to see evidence of regenerative and transforming life and um, and just uh, the testimony that is to to us to the world um, and so the verse that came to mind as I was thinking about that and just that thought over the last few days um, is 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And um, just as you walk through the different decisions, even college and, um, and different pressures, and, or walked through um, wrongs being done, um, that acknowledgement is there, that you are not your own, you were bought with a price, and the natural reaction is just to let him work then, let him let him humble and continue that humbling work. And so, um, and that's my encouragement, just as you go forward, there's so much freedom in just letting him be God and letting us be the created and um, letting him choose everything from, um, from the college decision to the, the roommate, the classes you take, the, friends you surround yourself with, because um, even as I look back, those decisions you never regret if they're done in faith. You never look back and you say, oh, I should have, really should have taken that one class. That would have moved me ahead. Like, why did I pay for an extra thing here? I should have spent my time here. Like, why did I do that extracurricular when um, it had no yield for me in the future? When by faith we let him make decisions for our lives, um, those are the ones we never never look back and never think that they were the wrong um, or um, misplaced or anything like that. So just continue to, in faith, let God be God and um, follow him in the humbling work of the different pressures. And um, yeah, and just remember and continue to remember that you're bought with a price. Um, and as Josh shared this Wednesday, as Josh shared, yeah, there he is. Um, Josh heard this one day, and it was like something I was chewing on then because, because it is true, and um, he deserves to have every choice in our life, and at the end of our life, he encouraged us all, saying, we are going to look in his face and see him eye to eye and know it was worth it, and, and he was worth it, and so um, sometimes we don't think about that with even some of the small things, like what we do for pastime, <laughs> um, but it'll be worth it if done in faith, and so, yeah. Um, so next year I'll be going to Masters University in California and I'll be studying pre-med with an emphasis in biology. 
And um, so I guess one way that you could pray for me right now is like, I also mentioned it, but I have a concussion and it's like making school really hard. And I like know it's his timing, but now it's like, I have like AP tests in a couple of weeks and just other stuff. And so just like praying through that and letting him, um, yeah, use it. And um, I also, um, I guess throughout the summer, you could pray for me that I'd be like intentional with how I'm using my time and I'm really ready to move on and like I'm excited to go meet new Christian friends and like just be surrounded like always with um, like-minded people because like school's been kind of tough, tough this year but um, but that I wouldn't like get so focused on that and be more focused on where God has me at right now and like the people he's putting me around right now and um, just being intentional with the time that I've left with them. And like, especially like I have a couple of friends that like are unbelievers that I've um, been pretty close to over the years. And so just that I wouldn't just like push that away, but that I would still um, be an open door to them. And then this year God has, well, it's been like kind of nerve wracking trying to decide where I'm going to go because it's like a big decision. And so I always knew I wanted to do pre-med, but then like I didn't really know where. And so I've been like trying to figure out like what it means to follow God's will and like the difference between like, because I do have a choice in like it, you know, but like also like he's directing me away. And so... Um, there's a verse, First Thessalonians 4, and it says, for the will of God is your sanctification. And that has just been really encouraging to think through. And, like, that's kind of like um, each day it's like really God doesn't care as much about my actions, but he cares about my heart. And that I'm becoming more like him every day and just, like, surrendering myself. And then um, another verse he's kind of used is... Um, Philippians and for to live is Christ and to die is gain and that I can like live every day with hope but then um but I'm also like it's Christ's life and so just like dying to myself every day and yeah but that's how he's been working this year so She mentioned it, but uh, many of you may not have heard. She took quite a shot to the head with a soccer ball this uh, two weeks or a week ago, a week ago, and um, anyway, um, concerning. And so do pray for her. Um, it's, a, it's a nasty, a nasty thing. Um, McKenna, I'm going to have you come on up. I'm going to reverse order. I'm going to do it the way I was, we were instructed to. I'm going to let you talk about your future plans, how we can pray for you. And, uh, and then what you've learned, and then I have a verse here I'm going to share, not to throw anybody else under the bus here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be attending UNI this fall, and I'll be majoring in kinesiology, movement, and exercise science. Um, so that's exciting. And then what was the other question? Oh, um, oh, going into UNI, it's like a secular campus. It's not like faith or here where I'm surrounded by a lot of Christians and accountability and authority. So just that um, I would find people that I can trust and put myself under their authority and stay consistent and not, like, just follow whatever's going on. Um, that's important to me. Um, and, oh, something I learned this year. Ooh, so much. Or through high school. Oh, that's even more. <laughs> um, I'd say just, like, trusting God with the little things that we bring our focus to because it's so easy, like, just as you're going through your day, things that pop up like stress me out and I'll be like oh no 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 like that can't happen but like if it's not in my control it's in God's control and I can't let that eat away at me and so I don't know yeah just trusting him with the little things cool well don't go away because um I wanted to do McKenna first because the very first thing that comes to my mind when I think of McKenna is she was always inclusive and loved being around people and and just wanted them to be a part of whatever she was doing and um when when the when I thought of tonight, Brooke came to mind because she's going to come. So, Brooke, I want to have you come, too, because McKenna says, 
there's this girl, you have to meet her, her name's Brooke. So Brooke's going to come, I'm going to follow up with, uh, with her here in just a second. But um, when I think of McKenna, one is, again, she just loves people. She's friendly and, and, and is inviting and, and wants them to feel uh, a part of what we're doing. And, um, and a part of that, too, is you would always come up with notes that you were taking during either a morning message or something that God was taking you through in a study. And if you looked at, and it, when, when you look at her notebook, it reminded me a lot of Missy's. And there was times I'm thinking, man, is Missy even taking notes? And there was all these flowers and these trees and then all of these things. And there was all of these notes. And then all of a sudden you would just have them explain what, and you would do that. You said, well, God was really instructing me in this way and drawing me to this truth and this principle. And that just blessed my heart, knowing that uh, there's, there, I, I'm not creative on that side of things. I'm, I have a hard time even getting the words out and, and written down. But how God gifts you and has gifted you with this creative mind that, that he wants to use as you take these notes and you're digging deeper and meeting with people. You're, I, I know you've met with, uh, with Laura and others and, and being discipled, continue that. And as you, your prayer request is, as you go away from the church and are out of high school and away from the home, that, that uh, you would seek out and really pray. And as a, we'll do this as a church here in just a moment, but to pray for people to come alongside them to, to shepherd their hearts just as a mom and a dad and a, and a church has desired to. And, and so that's blessed my heart. Um, the other thing was uh, that came to my mind is, is this, because I think we're a little wired the same. And, and Jeremiah says this in Jeremiah 17, if you want to be happy, McKenna, and blessed, you're going to be somebody who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord and then, McKenna, you will be like a tree that is planted by the waters, and when it spreads out its roots by the river, it will not fear when the heat, the stress, the drought comes. Your leaf will, not, will be green, and this is interesting, and you will not be anxious in the year of the drought, nor will you cease from yielding fruit. But here's the other part of this. When you have somebody who loves people, be careful because the heart is deceitful and it's above all desperately wicked. And your comment was very spot on because when we're away from a Christian home and a Christian church, the heart can be drawn if we're not careful. And my prayer for you is this, continue to be like the tree planted by the waters and, and allow the Lord to examine and to search your heart because when we love people, when we love people, sometimes our tendency is we want to please people. And, and we become a people pleaser, not a God pleaser. And, um, and, it, and it is, your, your notebooks have been a blessing to me. And so as you continue to go on and to grow, say, Lord, search my heart. Uh, one of the fears, and, and not to belabor the point, but we watched a video here a few Sunday nights ago, and it's, it's really telling, and, and I'll, I'll share a little bit more of that as to why this verse came to mind because of us but, um, and our similarities. But uh, do you know your name means happy one? I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, well, anyway, I just thought, and, that's, and, and it wasn't because of that, but when this verse came, happy is the person who trusts in the Lord, so continue to be happy. So anyway, um, this is what's interesting. They also drive Volkswagen bugs, and one's red and one is yellow. Oh, Brooke, you get this one, so I'm going to give this to you ahead of time. I just was reading here, and so McKenna, this is yours, but... We'll, we'll share Brooke here in just a second. So don't leave, McKenna. Um, McKenna and Anna play soccer. Lizzie plays soccer. And Brooke wanted to know if she could be the manager. And so when Pastor Jordan was talking this morning about platforms, you know, God gives us opportunities and where we're at, that was a good challenge for me because sometimes we think, oh, I'm going to use this. I just want to be here. And so I went home this afternoon. I was thinking about that. You know, everything we do in life is just a step. We're stepping and walking with the Lord. And, 
and, and yet to be around some of the girls here in the church and then having, having then the opportunity for them to play but also to, to manage. And, and when Brooke, when I think of Brooke, and don't laugh, Dustin, He's going he's gonna to die laughing. I just think of, she's got a quiet and a meek disposition. You're going to, yes, yes or no? Because mom and dad know these kids better than anybody. But there is this gentle, quiet spirit about her that just is inviting and draws. You're very responsible. You take initiative. There are times when it is freezing and it's rainy and it's cold. And if I were a manager, I would call and text or something and just say, "Um, is it okay if I stay? I got something else I could be doing in-house where it's warm. But no, she was there. She was there and she she supports and undergirds the, um, the rest of the team. You're a learner. There's times where she'll ask questions and, and, and why this or why that? Or, hey, do you need this set up? And if so, how do you want that done? And, and that was just really encouraging, just to be in a round brook in this capacity. But what really blessed my heart is this. We were talking about your dad one day, and I made a comment. And you just said, I am so proud of my dad. And I have never heard a teenager say that about their folks in those words. Now, they have shared appreciation and love, and, and, but don't get me wrong, because some of you are sitting there saying, well, my, my daughter, my, my son. I'm just saying it just was, it wasn't even a, a second split. She just said, oh, I'm so proud of my dad. And, and when gratitude dies on the altar of a person's heart, they are well nigh hopeless. And your, your relationship with your home is, is a blessing to watch. And don't lose that. And the verse that comes to my mind is this. The beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit is what 1 Peter 3 talks about. And, and to have that quiet spirit, Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my, take my life upon you, my yoke. And then he says this, and learn of me. So as we continue to put on Jesus Christ, learn from him through the word of God, and what will happen is, as a lifelong learner of Christ, that meek and gentle spirit will continue to just thrive in your heart. People will be drawn to that and be blessed by that, Brooke. And um, the other thing that I thought was interesting, uh, your name means a small stream or water. And I think it's really interesting how God uses people like you, like God told Elijah to go down by the brook, and I will tend to you there. Because there's going to be people come into your life, Brooke, that God is going to bring to be refreshed from you and to, to be blessed by you. And, um, and of all of our lives, the same capacity. So the Lord bless you. But uh, I need to give you the microphone because I just did it in backwards order here. So one, what are your plans? Number two, how can we pray for you? Number three, what have you learned coming through high school? Alrighty, so my plans for the next four years probably are going to, or I'm going to be attending Simpson College. That's in Indianola, kind of by Des Moines. Um, And I'm going to be majoring in forensic science and minoring in criminal justice. Um, I don't really know what branch of forensic science I'm going to do. I'm kind of leaning towards DNA physics right now. Um, But hopefully hopefully some classes that I'll be taking will kind of lead me in that path um, to kind of just like discovering. And then I also just found out that I will be dancing at Simpson. on their dance team, so football games, basketball games, which is pretty fun. Um, And then, oh, how can we pray? Um, So kind of relating to McKenna, like if we don't do that enough already, um, I think that Simpson is more of like a Methodist-based kind of like location. Um, So I think just praying for me that I can find like a good 
church that I could attend. Um, there's plenty other churches in the little town, um, but just like finding a good one that I can like connect with people from college um, that I can bring there or just like meeting new people, new families, anything would pretty much work <laughs> as long as I could go to church. Um, and then I think something that I have learned um, kind of also relating to what McKenna said um, was that God is in control. Um, I had a really rough first dance tryout. Um, it was really bad. I couldn't even believe that like I could perform as bad as I did on that first tryout. I was really embarrassed. Um, but then I got a second chance and I actually made the team, but what I didn't know is that my dad prayed for me in between and got me that second chance. So that was pretty cool. I gained a spot on the team because of it. So yeah, cool things. Yep. Make Landon come up just yet, because uh, I know he doesn't want to. So I'll, I'll wait and let him sit there for a little bit. Uh, but uh, as I was thinking through things with Landon, uh, he probably has one of the most unique prayer requests that I've ever had over the course of high school. And I've, I've heard a lot of interesting things, but I just felt this was unique enough to share. One night we were talking, I think it was him and maybe uh, Jerry and I, and we were in there just kind of talking through things. And he's like, well, he's like, I guess you could pray that we find my tarantula. <laughs> I was like, so apparently he came upstairs and first of all, he has a tarantula and he has two, yeah, two tarantulas, uh, which is two more than most of us. And the cage, which you normally like your tarantulas to be inside of, was empty and on the ground and uh, I would no longer be staying in that home. Uh, but uh, anyway, so... I was like, what's worst case scenario then? What are we talking? He's like, well, I mean, you like make it mad and it attacks you. And I was like, okay, that's, that's exactly what I thought. So uh, yeah, so anyways, um, that aside, as I was thinking through things with Landon, um, we uh, spent a lot of early mornings together, especially his sophomore, junior year, pre-COVID there in the weight room. And uh, it, it being consistent in the early morning, he was probably there, one of the most consistent guys through that time span. And, and it takes diligence and, and commitment to get up early in the morning and be there uh, every day. Uh, and it's not always something that you're going to want to do, you know. And, and so as, as we worked through this time, he, he came in and, and, and two years later, uh, you could see the work paying off. And, and I remember standing there and some football coaches were in there and they looked over at the bar and what Landon was loading onto the bar and they weren't sure he, if he was doing that for himself or for somebody else. And uh, he proceeds to lift like twice his body weight and, and they were shocked by what they were watching Landon do. And uh, you know, in, in our walk, a lot of times we don't always have to be the one that's verbally coming out in sharing, though, though in high school, more kids will tell you what they can lift than actually lift it. Uh, but, but Landon just came in and diligently did his work, and uh, I appreciated that about him. And when I was thinking through different verses, uh, I actually was, uh, went back to the Iwana days when I was younger. And, and in 2 Timothy 2.15, it says uh, to give diligence, to be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. And first of all, just the idea of being diligent uh, to give yourself and to present yourself to God. And, and that idea of one as one approved is one who has been tested by trial and, and, and stood the test of time, who has, who has been approved. And, and we do that, and my challenge to you is to as you go to college, do that by being grounded in the truth and, and, and rightly dividing the truth uh, of God. Because when I think of college, you will face trials, you will face tests. And when you, when you leave the home, you realize how many things you just did because that's the way things were done in your home or your 
town or your church or, or whatever, but, but then you have the opportunity to either be a follower or a leader, and, and most people choose to be a follower because then they can choose to follow the people that are doing what their heart's desire wants to do. Uh, but my challenge to you would be ground yourself in the Word of God so that when you, when you go into college and you're faced with trials, tests, uh, opportunities to decide which direction you're going to go, you have the Word of God to fall back on and not just the choosing of, of who you might follow, but you can lead with that example. And, and so that when others look at you and they see you, just as the picture of the weight room, uh, your walk will be a demonstration of, of, of that hope in you and the truth in you. And so that's my encouragement to you and my challenge to you is to take that same diligence and commitment there and, and apply that to the word of God as you head into college and, and make that your foundation. And, and, and through that, you will have a greater influence on the people around you than you realize. Uh, and, and God will bring those those, those friendships and those conversations around, but, uh, but through that, your, your life will then bring him glory just because of that faithful, diligent walk. So now you can come up. We'll let Landon come and share his uh, future plans with you. I did find the tarantula, so <laughs> it did take a bit, but so over the next four years or so, I'm probably going to go to Kirkwood for two years, get like my gen eds, like all done, maybe do a couple of different things, you know, I find out exactly what I want to do, and then I'm probably going to switch over to a four-year college in like Iowa and do like more specific specified stuff. I'm thinking either computer science or engineering, which are pretty big fields, so I'm gonna have to narrow that down. And then I think how uh, you could pray for me and like, you know, what I've learned over the years. You know, going back to the weight room, I think the only reason I actually came in was because John Lumberg picked me up every morning and I didn't want him to be sitting outside my uh, house waiting for me. So I always got up thinking, you know, he's going to be out there. I don't want, like, me to be asleep and him out there and then him being late. So I always got up. So, you know, I need to, I've always struggled to find someone to be, like, dependable on like that, to keep me, you know, doing stuff. So, you know, like, to keep me in the word, uh, like weekly and daily, you know, going forward through college just to find that person to do that for me. Landon, I'm going to have Landon and Anna, McKenna and Brooke and uh, Riley, where are you at? You guys come right up here and sit because pastor's going to close us off here in just a second. And that way you can get right, we used to call it the spit pit, be up here within spitting distance. That, that's gross. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say this um, as, as we as youth sponsors kind of conclude and recognize Josh and Missy as well. This last year, navigating through this last year and a half with the COVID, it was difficult, I'll, we'll be honest. And I, I really believe the teens, um, the teens adjusted really well while we might have complained internally as leaders. You know, we all wanted some normalcy in the way it was, and, and yet, you know, God's grace through his word was... was uh, was consistent and and so um, I'm just grateful for Ryan and Allie you know and others opening their homes and their backyards but as as I just want to share one more verse I look out and I see Sandy Lundberg and Justin what year were you born sorry N night night that's what I was just gonna say it was 1973 
and I was riding facing backwards in this station wagon, leaving Iowa City, going to Cedar Rapids to the All-Iowa Fair as a seventh grader because Dean and Sandy were my youth sponsors. And as I grew up in the church, and there was plumbing issues, electrical issues, there was some issue in the church, there would be the station wagon outside and either one or two kids would be getting out consistently and I watched a family that did things in serving the Lord but they were grooming and mentoring their kids to serve the Lord in that capacity. I say that to say this, you know, in a church plant in Williamsburg, in a younger church over in Iowa City, there were a lot of first generation Christian homes and my prayer as a youth leader is this, we need, we need to take God's word very seriously and say this, we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. We need to gather together to watch these kids grow in fellowship. And by the way, if you're new and after church, of course there's t chairs out there now, but that carpeted area is our kids' fellowship area. On a Sunday morning after church, it gets a little noisy out there. So if you want a quiet place to talk, stay in here, find a classroom. But, but I still remember one young person just coming up and looking up at me because I was standing on the carpet. He says, can you, can you get off the carpet, please? <laughs> that fellowship is important. Those kids need that because church becomes about friends and bringing people together under the word of God and, and to realize that Christ is the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. And he's, he's talking to husbands and wives here. But the church is to be submissive to Christ. So we are to place ourselves under Christ that he might sanctify and cleanse us with the washing of the water of the word so that he can present us to himself, sanctified and glorious and holy. And as we submit ourselves to the Lord and being here and rubbing shoulders with one another and doing life together, uh, God is, is glorified. I just wanted to say this in closing. Riley, you, your name means to be valiant. And it also means a clearing off of a timber for a rye field. Landon, your name means a long hill. Anna, yours is favor and grace and beautiful. I don't know why I'm looking at your mom. You're over here, Anna. <laughs> Brooke, we mentioned yours is a small stream and water. And McKenna, yours is happy one and blessed. So if we're going to be valiant in allowing God's sanctifying process to clear the way in our lives that grace and holiness can be cultivated in our lives, we need to understand it is a long uphill battle. But it is God's grace and favor that grants to us those times of refreshing at the small, that small stream, that small brook. And then as individuals, as believers in Christ, we are the ones who are happy and blessed. But the happiness up there is not because of my happenings. The happiness is God's grace, knowing that as he's taken me on this trajectory of climbing and suffering and pain and hardships, the end result is blessing. So God bless you, young people and your families. And uh, Pastor, you come and close our night off, would you? Is it now? Was it on mute? Is it working now? Okay, good. I'm getting old. I can't hold the mic and turn my Bible and all those things at the same time. But uh, I just want to leave you with three uh, key thoughts. And you probably don't have your Bibles up here with you this evening. I was going to have you write them right in your Bibles. But the three key words, peril, promise and process 
and the first is peril. Uh, these are not days, moms and dads, when we feel as comfortable as we may once have felt in uh, launching our children from our home and sending them out there in the world. It's a perilous place. I think we're seeing the fulfillment of a prophetic word from the Apostle Paul when he was mentoring his spiritual son, Timothy. And he says this, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. And he spends the next six or eight verses describing those perilous times. I'm going to spare you reading those because I don't want you all to be depressed when you leave. But the peril is serious. And uh, we are not sufficient for these things. And I think that uh, as we've come through this past year, you almost find it easier to hear what I'm saying now, where maybe a year or two ago you would have more easily dismissed it. This life is but a vapor. And uh, far more important for us to be alert to than the circumstances are the spiritual realities. And that leads us to the second key word. In light of this peril, there is a promise. And he sort of said that to young Timothy, too. He said, after listing the, the perils, he said, but you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life, purpose, faith. And you've done that with perseverance. And so the seriousness of that peril makes the promise and the word of process all the more important. In light of the peril, um, Turning back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peril is serious. We are not sufficient for these days. The days that Paul spoke to his spiritual son Timothy about are, I believe they're here. And they're made perilous because of the deceitfulness and the destructiveness of a sin-cursed world. And uh, that evil is becoming more and more evident and rampant in its lawlessness. But our sufficiency is in the Lord. And uh, the promise is fundamentally and foundationally formidable. Listen to it again. But thanks be to God. So foundational in its uh, strength and power and sufficiency that it's stated in a word of, of praise and, and acknowledgement of our sufficiency. It's in the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brother, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then from a yet different perspective, Paul gives us a process by which we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he states it in the next verse, verse 58, and then in the closing chapter, he kind of echoes it and gives a complimentary admonition. Uh, the first admonition is, therefore, my beloved brethren, seeing this foundational, formidable promise that God always gives the victory. It's an unfailing, foolproof promise. God always gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, Allison talked about how Anna faced some pressures. And uh, when you uh, leave the nest, so to speak, 
you don't have that support group you've had for the last 18 years, starting with your parents. Uh, we're thankful for that. And your church family. Um, that support group is still there in a transcendent way through prayer. And uh, so to communicate back to your parents uh, energizes that support group through prayer on Wednesday nights. You can think about what's going on back here on Wednesday nights that you were a part of, how important that was. And uh, think about this process uh, because we'll pray for you in this way. The process is this. Therefore, seeing you have this unfailing promise of all-sufficient power of uh, God's grace through Christ, therefore, be steadfast. And what that word essentially means is keep going forward, one step at a time. Don't think about tomorrow. There's no grace for tomorrow. I always like the illustration of the manna. What happened if you gathered manna today for tomorrow? Do you remember? What happened to the manna? Huh? Yeah, it rotted and got wormy. <laughs> and manna is really a picture of God's grace. We need the daily bread of God's grace and working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Keep making those steps forward in your Christian life. Don't take a day off. The peril is real. It's serious. But you need not fear. Because you have an all-powerful God. And his promise is certain. He will not fail you. Therefore steadfast, constantly moving forward. How do we do that? Second part of the process is uh, be steadfast and immovable. Forgot to give you the complimentary word, but in verse 16, chapter 16 and verse 13, the word that goes with steadfast is watch. How do we keep moving forward? The motivation is to be alert to God's presence in our life, but also the presence of sin within and temptation without, because that encompasses the, zone, the peril zone. And so we want to keep our eyes on the Lord. We want to be steadfast, looking to the Lord Jesus and constantly moving forward in our relationship with him, drawing upon that grace we so desperately need to depend upon. And the promise then will not fail. Be watchful. And how do we be steadfast in watching? Staying alert to those three areas of the spirit realm. Sin within, um, temptation outwardly, and most importantly, the presence of God's Spirit within us. Then secondly, being steadfast and immovable, and the word that accompanies that is stand fast. In chapter 16, verse 13, stand fast in the faith. Be immovable. Here, you have a support group. You're surrounded by an assembly of believers and caring parents. There, that won't be so much the case. And uh, therefore, you're going to have to uh, be immovable. That means unmoved by the herd mentality. It's a very powerful deception, what I'm about to say. All the rest of them are doing it. Must be okay. Your parents were a frustration to you for a good reason 
when you said that to them while living here, but they do it. And they would say, well, you're not them. <laughs> you belong to us. You won't do that. And so be immovable, unmoved by the herd mentality. Um, and the accompanied part of the process is stand fast in the faith. And that's how we keep ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Keep that walk forward in cleansing from sin and the communion of the Spirit through the Word daily. Be steadfast, constantly moving forward, immovable, not affected by the herd mentality, um, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And the complementary part of the process in verse 13 is be strong and courageous. That's why it's not empty in vain. When you remain steadfast, moving forward in your spiritual life and walk, immovable, uh, not moved by the herd mentality, you will be abounding in the work of the Lord. You'll be strong. You'll be courageous in the Lord. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to find new friends that are looking to you and finding familiar ground of encouragement. And they'll draw strength from the spirits working in your life to continue to be immovable and strong and courageous in the things that they were taught in their homes. And you will form a new support group that'll be vital uh, to your success in the unfailing promise. So uh, if you mark those in your Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58 have the promise and the process. You will find God's promise unfailing and his process sufficient because Christ will not fail you. Father, as we have a kind of send-off here this evening for these precious lives, that uh, you have entrusted to these faithful homes represented by the presence of their parents here tonight and this church family. We do so with an inner sense of real dependence upon you. The peril is real. But as Paul said to his spiritual son, Timothy, you have held fast to the teaching you've received. You've stayed on the course of the purpose God has for your life. The manner of your faith has become evident and fruitful. And therefore, God's promise to you will be unfailing. Father, help them, each one, to be steadfast, constantly moving forward in their Christian life and walk, not taking a day off, but being watchful and spiritually alert so that they might remain immovable, not affected by the herd mentality and the uh, influences and temptations of this wicked world system, but constantly walking through these adverse circumstances by faith, daily drawing on your grace through daily times of spiritual cleansing that are so necessary and and the uh, communion of your spirit in our life, imparting the power of true righteousness into our souls through your word. 
and always abounding in the work of the Lord with an inner strength and an inner courage that is sufficient for every need. So, Father, we ask that you would bless them with these spiritual blessings from heavenly places through Christ. And uh, as we uh, follow them with our prayers, I pray that they will sense the reality of that prayer support. Uh, they'll be living, as it were, in two worlds, so to speak. The world they grew up in at home and now a, a new world that, uh, where they're having to find their way and uh, find Christ as the all-sufficient help and shepherd of their souls. And uh, to know that that support group you surrounded them with throughout their formidable years is still there praying for them and uh, you can discern that prayer support in very real and tangible ways that will keep us steadfast and movable and abounding in the work of your grace in our life. So we just rejoice, Father, that we have this unfailing promise and this fruitful process by which you can demonstrate uh, your presence in our life every day. And we ask these things to the praise of your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight, and we hope you'll be able to stay for a time of fellowship. Any instructions, or are they all out there? Um, I should have asked if uh, we should pray. Maybe we should just take a moment and return thanks and ask God's blessing on our fellowship together as well, and then we'll be ready. Uh, so let's do that. Father, thank you for the blessing of fellowship. We don't take it for granted. And especially when Christ is at the center of what we have in common, you use that fellowship to stir our hearts in the very ways that we've spoken of here tonight and heard testimony of. You stir us up uh, in grace, love, and uh, the works of faith within. And uh, so use it, Lord, to edify and encourage tonight and cause our hearts to find their joy and rejoicing in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. Enjoy a time of fellowship together.